and welcome to our class, Getting a Handle on Technical Analysis, sponsored by TradeFred, one of the world's leading providers of CFD and Forex. Now, there's many reasons you should start trading with TradeFred. They have tight spreads, fast withdrawals. All your funds are segregated. They have a dedicated support service. They have an incredible amount of tools to help you trade better and a huge array of educational materials. When you trade with TradeFred, you get news and blogs, daily reviews, econ the economics counter, trading signals, or you can sign up for the Forex Academy and get all of your TradeFred answer questions answered. You get a full library of eBooks. You can attend all their educational webinars and watch all their video tutorials. So there's many reasons to trade with, with TradeFred, but most of all, they are a regulated provider regulated by CISIC and passported throughout the European Union. They're also a member firm of the Investor Compensation Fund, so all your funds are safe and insured at all times. Now, because they are a regulated provider, I need to give you a risk warning. So if you can read along this page, I would appreciate it while I read you the first paragraph. Trading in the financial markets may result in the loss of your deposited funds. Please ensure that you fully understand the risks or seek independent advice if necessary. Now, when you trade with TradeFred, you have a choice of platforms. You can trade on their incredibly dynamic online CRX platform, where you simply log in and start trading, or you can use their mobile device, one of the most advanced mobile apps in the marketplace, or you can download their MT4 platform for a more professional environment. You also get signals pushed directly out to your platform and you can watch them. They tell you all the indicator readings. They tell you when to trade, what assets to trade, where it's going. And you can use them as your alerts to keep you on top of the markets. So now let's get started with getting a handle on technical analysis. Now, by the way, tonight's class is being recorded. And if you want to see a recorded version of the class, if you just wait, oh, about 24 hours, you can use the same link you used to come to tonight's class to see a recorded version. Or in about a week or so, it will also be uploaded to the investing.com website, you know, where and investing.com is who used, you know, sponsored tonight's class or powers tonight's class where you signed up for the class. So you can go onto their website, look under education, and they go to webinars on demand. You can also see all the past webinars there and you can select from any type of webinar you wish to watch. Now, in tonight's class, I'm going to use the word or term security a great deal. But when I use the term security, I'm referring to any tradable financial instrument. This includes stocks, bonds, commodities, futures, indices, mutual funds, and options. While I may imply a specific investment product, like I may say shares, which implies an equity, these investment concepts will work with any publicly traded financial instrument in the open markets that has liquidity. Similarly, I intermix the terms investing and trading. Now, what we're all here for tonight is really trading. We're simply day traders, short-term traders, swing traders, trading to make a profit on a holding an asset for a short term, where investors really buy an asset and put it away for a longer term. But the terms are interchangeable for tonight's class. So typically an investor takes a long-term position while a trader takes a much short-term position. In either case, the basic concepts and techniques presented tonight's class are equally adept because words are like money. There is nothing so useless unless when you're actually going to use them. So what is technical analysis? Well, technical analysis helps you decide, should I buy today? What will the prices be tomorrow or next week or next year? Wouldn't investing be easy if we knew the answers to these seemingly simple questions? At last, if you're attending tonight's class in the hopes of technical analysis, has the answer to these questions? I'm afraid I have to disappoint you early. 
it doesn't. However, if you're attending this webinar with the hope that technical analysis will improve your investing or trading, I have good news for you, it will. Now, when we think about the types of market analysis, we have fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Now, a lot of people trade for fundamental analysis. And yes, when some, some company presents their earnings, like Netflix subscriber base was down and their earnings weren't so good, their stock will crash. Okay. But on the other hand, you might know it's going to go down, but how do you determine how far down it's going to go? Or maybe the market's already took it into effect and is already trading at a low. Or maybe the market's bought at a low and they're willing to stay, they, they, they're overlooking the information. You're only going to get this through technical analysis. And that's the difference. Fundamental analysis can help you decide to make a trade, but it's not going to give you an entry point and an exit point. It's not going to tell you when the trend is reversing. It's not going to tell you when the markets are, the buyers are coming in and out of the market. The term technical analysis, though, or the field of technical analysis, is a complicated sounding name for a very basic approach to investing. Simply put, technical analysis is the study of prices. And it's done with charts as the primary tool. So anytime you look at a chart, you're performing technical analysis. Some people refer to chart analysis, but it's technical analysis because all analysis is done on charts or technical analysis is done on charts. So if you're just simply looking at a plain old simple line chart, you're still using technical analysis. Now the root of modern day technical analysis stems from Dow theory. This is what most people don't know. They don't know where the roots are, but it comes from Dow theory. And Dow developed a lot of stuff. Charles Dow is really the father of all analysis and understanding the markets. And he developed Dow theory around the 1900s. Stemming either directly or indirectly from Dow theory, these roots include such principles as the trending nature of prices. Prices discount all known information. Confirmation and divergence, volume, Mirroring changes in prices and support and resistance, they all come from the basics of Charles Dow's Dow theory. And of course, the widely followed Dow Jones in average is a direct offspring of Dow theory. Charles Dow's contributions to modern day technical analysis cannot be understated. His focus on the basics of security price movements gave rise to a completely new method of analyzing the markets. Now, we also have to remember, and this is a, a, a thing that we sometimes forget, and that's the human element. Because everybody thinks, oh, today I can download a robot, or I can get an app that'll do something for me or I can use quants and they're going to tell me everything I need to do and I'll make a fortune. Well, if you could all trade by robotic trading and never be wrong, wouldn't everybody be billionaires? And remember, on every side of a winning trade is a losing trade. And this is because the markets are made up of human beings who exhibit individual psychological responses. The price of a security represents a consensus. It is the price at which one person agrees to buy and another agrees to sell. The price at which an investor is willing to buy or sell depends primarily on his expectations. If he expects the security price to rise, he will buy it. If the investor expects the price to fall, he will sell it. These simple statements are the cause of a major challenge in focusing or forecasting security prices because they refer to human expectations. And so if we keep in mind at all times that all the analysis and all the decision and all price action on charts is part of the psychological makeup of the markets, we'll understand that it's very hard 
to use mathematical formulas and not a human element to understand what's happening in the market because you have to be able to think about how other people are thinking. So as we all know firsthand, humans are not easily quantifiable nor predictable. This fact alone will keep any mechanical trading system from working consistently. Because humans are involved, I am sure that much of the world's investment decisions are based on irrelevant data. Our relationship with our family, our neighbors, our employer, the traffic, our income, and our previous successes and failures all influence our confidence, our expectations, and our decisions. So even if you're a big trader with a big bank, you had a big fight with your wife in the morning, and you want to leave early because you got a kid's school play, your mood for that day is going to be different. So even though all the figures you're getting, you've got the most important data in front of you. You've got the most advanced computer system, robotic system, and mathematical calculations. Your decisions one day might be slightly different than your decisions the next day. And we're not talking about whether you're going to buy or sell, but the point you push that button to execute the trade. Maybe today you're a little bit more cautious, so you're going to execute the euro at 116.05. Maybe if it was a different day and you had a couple successes earlier today and your wife gave you a kiss on the cheek and you were in really good mood, maybe you would have executed at 116.02. Who's to say? So security prices are determined by money managers as well as home managers, students, strikers, doctors and dog catchers, lawyers and landscapers, and the wealthy and the wanting. We all all make up this money and this market. The breadth of market participants guarantees an element of unpredictability and excitement. Now, when I started to trade 40 years ago, we were doing mostly trading by hand and there were very few people in the market. There were professional traders and all of us sat in the pits at brokers at, you know, at, at brokers offices because the data would only come by ticker tape because there was no internet and so we move slower, but the human element was less because we were all, and whether you were a trader in New York, a trader in Chicago, whether you, you, you lived in London, we all kind of thought the same. We were all made up of the same. We were all these emotionless people that had done all of these calculations. Well, once the world moved to online trading and the markets got filled up thousands and thousands and thousands of people from all different backgrounds. There were all different psychological makeups. Even if you're now a professional trader that trades all day and trades head, you're trading in your house or your little office separated and segregated from all of those professionals out there. You have very little interrelations. So it's changed the makeup of the markets. It's changed the psychology and the people's psychology behind the markets. So if prices are based on investor expectations, then knowing what a security should sell for becomes less important than knowing what other investors expect it to sell for. That's not to say that knowing what a security should sell for isn't important, but there is usually a fairly strong consensus of a security's future earnings that the average investor cannot disprove. Now, in my experience, only a minority of technicians can consistently and accurately determine future prices. However, if you are unable to accurately forecast future prices, technical analysis can be used to consistently reduce your risk and improve your profits. What we want to do is we want to use technical analysis to move us away from the gambling and move us over to a more professional environment where we can use odds and statistics and reduce our risk and increase our profitability. A technical analysis is what moves you and gives you the edge. So the best analogy I can find on how technical analysis can improve your investing is a roulette wheel. And I hate to 
because and don't sit out there and think that he's saying investing is gambling. It isn't. It's a whole world apart. Investing and trading is investing and trading. Gambling is, yes, going over and putting your money on double zero and hoping that wheel is going to spin and hit double zero because you can't rig the odds in a casino. But in investing, you can use analysis and technical analysis to move the odds in your favor and you can use risk management to reduce your risks. And this is where you take control. So I use the analogy with reservation as gamblers have very little control when compared to investors. Although considering the action of many investors, gambling may be a very appropriate analogy. And that's one of the problems. Too many people come in this market and they're gamblers. They're not traders or investors. A casino makes money on a roulette wheel, not by knowing what number will come up next, but by slightly improving the odds with the addition of the zero and the double zero. And all the casino wants to do is they want to make two or 3% of every wager, that, you know, all the net wagers. That's it. So if they can move the odds without rigging anything, they come out ahead. Similarly, when an investor purchases security, he doesn't know that its price will rise. But if he buys a stock when it is in a rising trend after a minor sell-off and when interest rates are falling, he will have improved his odds of making a profit. That's not gambling. It's intelligence. Yet many investors buy securities without attempting to control the odds. So contrary to popular belief, you do not need to know what a securities price will be in the future to make money. Your goal should simply be to improve the odds of making profitable, profitable trades while reducing your risk. Even if your analysis is simple, as determining the long, intermediate, or short-term trends of a security, you will have gained an edge that you will probably would not have had without technical analysis. Now, a lot of people, and I mentioned it briefly, say, well, why don't we all just use automated trading if technical analysis is so wonderful? Because if technical analysis is about nothing but mathematical calculations and lines put on a chart, and these lines can all be put into numeric value, why can't we just use automated trading? So if we accept the fact that human emotion and expectations play a role in security pricing, we should also admit that our emotions play a role in our decision-making. Many investors try to remove their emotions from their investing by using computers to make decisions for them. The concept of a how, remember from the 2001 movie, the 2001 movie is appealing. Mechanical trading systems can help us remove our emotions from our decisions. Computer testing is also useful to determine what has happened historically under various conditions and to help us optimize our trading techniques. Yet, since we are analyzing a less than logical market, we must be careful that our mechanical systems don't mislead us into thinking that we are analyzing a logical entity. This is not to say that computers aren't wonderful technical analysis tools, but that's exactly what they are. They are tools that we use in our technical analysis because back in my day, when we didn't have computers, you couldn't do all this technical analysis because it was mind boggling, doing the calculations, dropping it on chart, it was very slow and time consuming. So in my totally unbiased opinion, or my totally biased opinion, technical analysis software has done more to level the playing field for the average investor than any other non-regulatory event. Because with computers and technical analysis tools, you now have the same information and are able to do the same calculations that a hedge fund manager can do, that a black box automated program can do, or that a robotic trading system can do. You have the accessibility through the internet of scanners that'll scan all the markets looking for specific trades that you've specified. 
But as a provider of technical analysis tools, I caution you not to let the software lull you into an unbelievably unbelieving market as a lo as logical and predictable as the computer you use to analyze them. So technical analysis is based almost entirely on the analysis of price and volume. The fields which define a securities price and volume, we're gonna take a look at. But because we want to understand and we do realize that the human element plays a aspect in trading and we understand this, we can then look for historical price patterns in charts. We can look at support and resistance zones in charts, prices where the buyers and sellers have hemmed and hawed in the past. And this is why, because the psychological makeup is, we expect a person to react the same way this time as they reacted last time when we had an asset doing the same thing. Now, most of us stop to think that technical analysis are these big and involved mathematical calculations that are feel, fall under the field of technical indicators that are put on the bottom of our chart, like RSI and stochastics. But there's a more basic part of it. It's trend lines. And remember, I told you technical analysis, anything that's done on a chart. Well, price patterns and patterns are one of the most important things. Technical analysis involves looking at patterns in price history to determine the higher probability time and place to enter and exit a trade. As a result, technical analysis is one of the most widely used types of analysis. Since online trading is in most cases involves only major assets, the movement on a chart from the price action generally gives us clues about hidden levels of supply and demand. Now, technical analysis is a bit of a misnomer since it's really not that technical. A better name for the use of charts for to make investment decisions might be risk-reward analysis or even market psychology. Sure, there are some complex mathematical concepts involved when some with some of the more esoteric indicators. But at its core, technical analysis is simply a method of determining if an asset is worth buying or selling. Basically, technical analysis is going to tell you if the move up in the trend is staying strong and will it continue, or is it weakening and coming down? And what type of momentum does the asset have on that trend? It tells you this, you want to see the, the trend through this trend and how long it's expected to last. So once we identify this, we are way ahead of the game with regards to assembling a winning portfolio. Simply stated, technical analysis, the study of data generated by the market from the actions of the people in the market. Now, such data includes price levels that have served as turning points in the past, the amount of stock or assets being traded or bought and sold each day, which is known as volume, and the rate of change in price movements known as momentum. These are the basics. These are the most important ones. Technical analysis also attempts to measure the collective investor psyche, calling heavily on psych the psychology of crowds and the cycle of greed and fear. What is the most well-known index that you hear about all the time? It's the VIX. It's called the fear index. It's actually measuring the amount of fear in the marketplace. Was investor sentiment ever as negative as it was in March 2009 when the markets came crashing? Critics will point out that forecasting future price movements based on past price movements is akin to reading tea leaves or divining the future from the textures of chicken entrails. And that's how a lot of people say it's a whole bunch of garbage. Okay, and there's a whole bunch of garbage out there. Many of the high priests of fundamental analysis are quick to call technical analysis the world's alchemy. Indeed, chart, chart watchers cannot predict the future any better than your broker, your spouse, or a Ouija board. 
But what they can do better than most is to make a decision about what to do, to buy or sell or hold, based on probabilities of actions of others given certain conditions. In other words, if a pattern on a chart appears, a chart watcher can create a framework for what the market might do if and when the price breaks free. Now, tonight we thought that's a lot of words. So I'm gonna show you some live charts and let's see exactly what we're talking about. Okay. Now, these are not charts I'm advising you to trade. I'm not giving you any secret trading information. I'm not giving you any analysis. What we're looking at here is a chart for Bitcoin and we see a triangle formation. Now, what we're looking for is a breakout of this triangle because prices are moving up into this apex and the pent up demand is about to happen. Okay. When it breaks out, whether it breaks up or down, we can then combine that with volume and predict the momentum that that asset will have to break out. But we are waiting for something that we can actually see on a chart. If this price is able to break out in this direction, we can then predict the levels we might expect that asset to move to. By combining that with volume, when it does break that level, we can then predict or see how many people, based on human psychology, are jumping in to buy that asset. If it breaks down, we could also do that. But that, because it's looked done by looking at a chart, is technical analysis. Here we have another perfect unit. This is a chart pattern called head and shoulders. Okay, We've got the full completion of the head and shoulders. Head and shoulders is a reversal pattern on a chart. When it breaks out of that head and shoulders pattern, we would expect a reversal in trend. We had the asset moving in a downtrend, formed head and shoulders, and look at the push up here in the price. Now, in this case, we've got other technical analysis indicators down below to confirm our interest. But these are chart patterns that appear on charts. These aren't technical indicators. Okay. This is simply looking at price movement on charts. Now, there's all types of different analysis you can do. And last night, was a perfect example. We had a beautiful triangle develop. We had the breakout right here. We had our support and resistance zone from our support from our support and resistance eyeballing. We waited for price to break above and look at how that momentum carried it. Well, we simply were looking at the psychology of the markup, the makeup of the markets. And it's part of technical analysis. Look at the jump in volume as the price not only broke out, but then the price broke its resistance zone. So all of this is giving us information about the psychology of the markets, but it all feels falls in the study of technical analysis. So we have support and resistance and trend lines, really basic stuff. Then we have chart patterns that appear on our charts. We have volume that's appearing on our charts. And then we can come over here to our other types of indicators. And all of this falls in the area of technical analysis because it is done on the charts. But we have very simple technical analysis and very complex technical analysis. We have indicators which are simply mathematical calculations like RSI, Stochastics, and MACD. Or we have patterns that we can actually see. We're looking at candlestick charts. Candlesticks are also technical analysis because we're using a trading system to read the candles and look for common prices or common formations. Like when we look for 
in bullish engulfing or bearish engulfing patterns. We look for red, three black soldiers, or th three white soldiers, three black crows. We look for bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing patterns. These are just patterns we're looking for in the candlesticks. All of this, again, is technical analysis. Now, it all comes down to basically a few sets of information because it all is based on price action. Whether we're looking at the patterns, chart patterns, whether we're looking at support and resistance levels, whether we're looking at trend lines, or we're looking at Elliott wave patterns, we're looking at GAN fans, whether we're looking at RSI, Stochastics, MACD, it's all based on four paces, pieces of information or actually five, price and volume. So we're looking at the open, the high, the low, and the close for the periods in which we are analyzing. And whether we're looking at it on a bar chart or a candlestick chart, we want to look at those four pieces of information and volume. Volume is the number of shares or contracts that were traded during the period. The relationship between price and volume is important. Then we have open interest in the stock market. This is the total number of contracts, those that have not been exercised, closed, or expired. I'm sorry, of futures, not stock market. And options. Our open interest is often used as an indicator. So price action. We also have bid and ask in price action. So the foundation of technical analysis is the chart. In this case, a picture truly is worth a thousand words. Price can be displayed as a line chart. A line chart is the most basic of all charts. Or a bar chart, which is my favorite, which shows you the open, the high, the low, and the close. A bar chart is a little bit more complex than a line chart, but a bar chart and candlestick chart both have the same four pieces of information, referred to as OHLC, open, high, low, and close. But we can start to see in a bar chart some commonality. We can start to see the patterns. We can start to see where which prices were important. Okay, We can start to see trends and movements. And then we go on to one of the most, the most popular in online trading, and that's candlesticks. So although bar charts and line charts were quite popular among Western traders, Japanese candlestick charts and the additional patterns were introduced to the Western world in the 1990s. The popularity of candlestick charts has soared among Western market analysts over the last few decades because of the highly accurate predictive nature. It's really soared because of the online today with computerized charts. It takes no time at all to make candlestick charts. Back when I started trading, we had to do, we sat there with graph paper putting all the lines on charts. Well, it was a lot easier to draw a bar line, just simply an OHLC, than a candlestick where you had to color in the centers. And today, that's all done for you automatically by computers. Although most people don't understand the basics of candlesticks because it's not about the reds and the greens, it's really about the position of the current candle with respect to the previous candle and the next candle and their formations. But before you can read a candlestick chart, you must understand the basic structure of a candlestick. Each candlestick accounts for a specified tier period, which could be a one minute, a 60 minute, a daily or weekly. Regardless of the time period, a candlestick represents four distinct values on a chart. The open, the high, the low, and the close. Okay. But same pieces of information are on a bar chart. Now, technical analysis is the study of historical price action in order to identify patterns and determine probabilities of future movements in the market through the use of technical studies, indicators, and other analysis tools. Technical analysis boils down to two things, identifying trends, identifying support and resistance, through the use of price charts and other timeframes. So there's three things you need to know. 
Markets can only do one of three things. You can either be in an up market, you can be in a down trending market, or you can be in a sideways trending market. Now, you can have a long-term trend upward with a short-term downtrend in the middle of it, but you can only have these trends. And trends are just about the zigzag pricing or the peaks and the valleys as price moves up. So you either moving up, making peaks and valleys. Markets don't move that way. They move this way. And by understanding where the price is in relationship to the trend, the short-term and the long-term trend, you can then make predictions about where it might go in the near-term future. Technical analysis of a market can help you determine not only when and where to enter a market, but much more importantly, when and where to get out of a market. Now, technical analysis is based on the theory that the markets are chaotic. Why are they chaotic? Because of human elements, human nature. No one knows for sure what will happen next. But at the same time, price action is not completely random. In other words, mathematical chaos theory proves that within a state of chaos, there are identifiable patterns that tend to repeat. This type of chaotic behavior is observed in nature in the form of weather forecasts. For example, when most traders will admit that there's no certainties when it comes to predicting exact price movements, as a result, successful trading is not about being right or wrong. It's about determining the probabilities and taking trades when the odds are in your favor. Part of that determining probability involves forecasting market direction and when and where to enter into a position. And equally important, and more important than any, any strategy or trading decision, is to determine your risk to reward ratio and make sure that you are in balance whenever you make a trade and reducing your risk and limiting your loss losses. So remember, there is no magical combination of technical indicators that will unlock some secret in trading strategy. The secret of successful trading is good risk management, discipline, and the ability to control your emotions. Anyone can guess right and win every once in a while. Well, without risk management, it is virtually impossible to remain profitable over time. So since chart watching is not infallible, or, not, or even more important aspect, is that it tells us quickly our assessment of the market's mood is incorrect. And that's one of the nice things when we're watching a chart and we've made this analysis and we've entered a trade, it will quickly tell us when it's moving against us or analysis was incorrect and give us the ability to get out of the market. So basic chart analysis is rather easy. Let's lay out a set of basic yet powerful tools so you can perform your own technical test on a security. While professional technical analysis have dozens, if not hundreds of tools at their disposal, it boils down to really three steps. Seeing where the security is currently trading and figuring out how it got there, determining the power of the trend and making comparison of the asset to its peers in the industry and even to its own history. To do this, all that is needed are a few basic technical tools. You can start out with trends and trend lines, add support and resistance, and look at volume, and you can have a successful plan. Or simple moving averages and moving average crossovers can take the noise out of trading and give you good entry and exit points. But volume and momentum, these are two indicators that confirm the health of a trend and warn of an impending change. To do this, all you need are some key technical tools and a step-by-step -step process. So now that we have the theory and the tools, you need to look at the process of going after an area to decide to buy and sell. So if you look at a trend and say, when that price breaks, stays above the trend, but hits and bounces off of it, and it moves up to the support line and volume's increasing, you're gonna enter a market. Fading volume, 
could tell you that that asset is about to turn. But all you're trying to do is find a trading candidate. So if the asset passes all these tests, we have a candidate to trade. Then you have to decide your risk reward, how you're going to enter a trade, what price you're going to enter a trade, and apply your money management and risk management. Because all the technical analysis does, it gives you a candidate to trade and will tell you when the markets are turning against you. But it doesn't have to be complex. You don't have to use all these tools. Chart patterns, trend lines, and support and resistance and volume give you a great system because no system is going to be right all the time. No strategy can be right all the time. It's your risk management and money management that is the key. So on that note, I'm going to say good night to everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. And when you have a chance, go to www.tradefred.com and watch their video tutorials on technical analysis and learn about trends and trend lines. They have another video on support and resistance, and they have another one on applying technical indicators. So have a good night, and thank you once again. Bye now.